Assalamu alaikum. This presentation is on the voice shimmer, the small, short-term and random fluctuations in the amplitude of consecutive glottal cycles. The amplitude of consecutive glottal cycles are not always entirely symmetrical. Sometimes there would be small a changes in the amplitude between these consecutive cycles and if these uh, changes in the amplitude exceed a certain threshold they become an indication of a voice pathology the amplitude perturbations are called vocal shimmer and uh, are defined as cycle to cycle fluctuations in the amplitude of the adjacent cycles as with jitter, which is the perturbations in the fundamental time of each glottal cycle, there have been many ways in which the vocal shimmer can be quantified. The simplest is, of course, the average shimmer across um, a certain period, when the differences between consecutive cycles are added up and divided by the number of the cycles. For decades, it has been observed that the commonest finding in the pathological voice conditions is a strong tendency for frequent and rapid changes in the vibratory cycle frequency and amplitude. The changes in the uh, vibratory cycles the consecutive or adjacent cycles amplitude are called the shimmer and these can be observed directly using a video stroboscopy as in here or high speed video films they can also be measured the acoustic consequences of this irregularities can be uh, recorded and analyzed Perturbations can occur normally during speech. The voice sound in speech are not always entirely periodic. Even the most serious attempt by a speaker or a singer to produce steady phonation, like sustained vowel, for example, would end up with uh, some tiny changes in the frequency and the amplitude of the glottal cycles producing a certain amount of jitter and shimmer. It's only when this exceeds a certain threshold that they become noticeable and pathological. Why do we have these perturbations in the voice even with a normal voice production? The causes are multiple. They can be of neurological origin, biomechanical, aerodynamics, and some acoustic sources as well. There can be some fluctuations in the action potential of the laryngeal muscles during phonation, or some fluctuations in the distribution of the mucus on the vocal folds, or some asymmetry in the vocal folds structure during phonation. There can also be fluctuation in the airflow emerging from the glottis with each glottal cycle, and there can be irregularities in the interaction between the source, the glottal, uh, uh, glottal signal, and the vocal tract. The intensity of the voice, the amplitude of the glottal signal, is related to the subglottic air pressure and to the resistance to the airflow at the glottal level, the glottal valve resistance. This resistance is in turn dependent on things like the vocal folds stiffness, the vocal fold uh, edges vibrating mass, and the vocal folds contact mode. The shimmer can change with reduction in the glottal resistance and also with mass lesions on the vocal folds and can also be seen that it correlates with the presence of noise emitting with the glottal signal, particularly with things like breathness, 
related to uh, a reduced glottal valve resistance. A small amount of shimmer can be observed in normal voices even while producing things like sustained long vowels, which is meant to produce the least amount of irregularities in the glottal cycles. These irregularities, the random fluctuations between the amplitudes of the glottal cycles, would increase markedly while producing normal speech or while reading, and also with the aging voice. When compared with the amount of fluctuations in patients who have dysphonia or have voice pathologies, the patients who have voice pathologies have more shimmer compared to normal individuals. And the difference between a dysphonia and a normal person increases with uh, measuring shimmer with sustained vowels more than with reading or speaking normally. Beyond a certain limit, a certain threshold, the amount of shimmer may indicate a voice pathology. How can shimmer be measured and quantified? There are several ways to do this. The most straightforward is the absolute shimmer. This is the uh, average of the shimmer across a certain time period. You uh, measure the difference between the amplitude of cycle two and cycle one. Add to this the, the difference between cycle three and cycle two and cycle four and cycle three and so on and divide it by the number of the cycles minus one. This will give the absolute or the local shimmer. If this absolute shimmer is uh, presented as a percentage of the average amplitude of the glottal signal across the time period, this is then called the shimmer relative or the shimmer percentage. There are other ways of um, quantifying shimmer, including the running averages of three cycles at a time or five cycles or 11 cycles. We'll go through these uh, ways of measuring shimmer one by one. The shimmer absolute is just the average of the shimmer across a certain time period. We add up all the differences between consecutive cycles and divide this by the number of the cycles minus one, multiply this by 20. It's presented in decibels. The threshold to detect pathologies is anything more than 0.35 decibels. This is the shimmer absolute. The shimmer relative or the shimmer percentage is obtained from the shimmer absolute or the local shimmer divided by the average of the amplitude of the glottal cycles in the time period multiplied by 100. This will give a percentage. If this percentage exceeds 3.8, then this is an indication of a voice pathology. And then there are several perturbation cautions, basically running averages of 3, 5 or 11 cycles. Starting with this, the shimmer APQ3, the three-point amplitude perturbation quotient. You obtain this by comparing the amplitude of a certain glottal cycle to the average amplitude of the three cycles, the one before and the one after and the one under test. The average of these three cycles would be subtracted from the uh, amplitude of the cycle in the middle and then divided by the average amplitude of the three cycles together in percentage, this will produce the APQ3. The second running average um, quotient is the shimmer APQ5, the five point amplitude perturbation quotient. This time, 
the two cycles after and the two cycles be before a certain glottal cycle will be averaged in amplitude. This will be subtracted from the amplitude of the cycle in the middle and then divided by the average amplitude of the five cycles to produce this running average, APQ5. And you can obtain another running average, the APQ11, by subtracting the average of 11 consecutive cycles, five cycles after and five cycles below a certain glottal cycle from the amplitude of that glottal cycle and then divided by the average amplitude and obtain another running average, the APQ11. Out of these several methods and the quantification of the shimmer, it is the absolute shimmer in decibels or the relative shimmer in percentages that are more often used. There are, however, some serious concerns about the methodology of obtaining a shimmer. These concerns originate from three fundamental facts. The phenomena being measured is very small entity, less than 4%, for example. So a small uh, error in the measurement can cause significant results error. The second uh, factor is that with all perturbation measures, um, there is a need for very precise determination of the onset and the offset of individual glottal cycles. Any errors in the measurement can cause serious error in the results. It is difficult to be very precise with the onset and the offset of individual cycles, particularly with marginally periodic voices that are in fact the one that we are more interested in clinically in determining their degree of perturbation. The third fundamental factor that several software systems are employed to measure perturbation measures, including Shimmer. Some of these systems correlate well with each other, reasonably well with a correlation coefficient of 0.8, but others don't correlate well at all with a correlation uh, quotient of 0.2. Is there any clinical relevance for these perturbation measures, including measuring shimmer? Now, although some investigators have reported positive findings with higher degree of shimmer in patients who have dysphonia compared to those who have normal voices, there is no consistent evidence, valid and reliable, that shimmer and other perturbation measures can sort patients into diagnostic criteria categories like normal or pathological. So there is no clear consensus about, among laryngologists on the clinical relevance of the perturbation measures. Listeners in general are more sensitive to the overall extent of aperiodicity in a certain voice they can tell that there is a certain amount of noise in the voice signal, but they have more difficulty in telling the origin of this uh, periodicity, whether it is the irregularities in the fundamental frequency or the amplitudes. So they can judge a periodicity with respect to the overall amount of noise in a certain a signal rather than decomposing it into separate aspects. They are less uh, sensitive to the amount of jitter, for example, or a shimmer in a voice signal, but they can tell that there is certain degree of overall uh, amount of aperiodicity or irregularities. The other issue is how these perturbation measures, jitter or shimmer, are correlated with the way we perceive voice in terms of dimensions like roughness or hoarseness or overall severity of the dysphonia. 
Again, there is no consistent evidence for a direct relationship between a perturbation measure and a perceptual dimension. Uh, listeners could tell that there is a certain degree of uh, noise or irregularity in a voice signal, but they find difficulty in isolating jitter and shimmer as separate dimensions from the spectral noise in the voice, at least with the current ways of quantifying perturbations, of quantifying jitter or shimmer. Perhaps because of the variety of the technical problems in measuring these perturbations. It's and now um, this has prompted some investigators to question the utility of perturbations uh, measures in general in characterizing the voice quality. By this, we come to the end on this presentation on the voice shimmer. Salam alaikum.